So this is the second rendition of our can crusher model. Um, basically what we've done is we've just made it a little bit more robust after finding out the actual forces involved. Um, and we've, after doing testing, um, to get to a one by one cube, which is what we were hoping, um, is gonna re would require about 8,000 pounds of force. And so, <laughs> and we'd have to include a safety factor into that, which would bring us up to something like 15,000 pounds or 12,000 pounds. And um, so that would just kind of put the price uh, over our budget to do so. So what, instead what we've done is just made our model a bit more robust and brought down the cube size. It's not going to be a cube anymore. It's actually going to be one and a half by one and a half by one. And so this first crush in this direction will be um, one and a half inches. Then this will crush to one and a half inches. And then this will, our final crush, will bring it into one inch. And what that will do um, is bring our actual force required, this final crush to do that, would actually bring it down to about 3,000 pounds. It's like 3,200. And then with a safety factor of one and a half, uh, we need to be able to generate 5,000 pounds. So that brings us back into budget. And, um, you know, as a nice compromise, one and a half still fits our requirement. And then the one inch, um, this final crush just makes it even smaller, which is good. So it's a good compromise. Um, when I say the model's a lot more robust, basically what we've done is we've made these into blocks. Um, but we've used as a material, instead of doing a direct drive, rack and pin in type of system, what we've done is instead we're going to be making use of Acme threaded rod, and this is just uh, regular threaded rod for the model, and then just some dowel pins as guide rods. But essentially what we're going to be doing is we'll have motors that will be hooked up by chain to these gears so that we have our gear ratio of like two or three we're hoping for, um, for our sprockets I should say, they're going to be connected by a chain. And then we're going to have a fixed end of the Acme rod and then we're going to have this gear free to spin in place which will push and retract um, our push blocks here, our push pistons. So the advantage to this system is that by using Acme rod the amount of torque that we actually need to generate at this axis is no longer like a one-to-one. -one. We only are using a fraction of the amount of force that we need to generate on the axis straight onto the um, the push block. We only only need to generate a fraction of that in um, inch pounds of torque. So that dr drastically reduces the amount of motor power we need to provide. But basically the idea is that we're going to be moving very slowly and that this gear will be pushing against this plate or a plate on this side, which will um, be bearings will be fixed into the, this plate and a plate that will be back here so that this is fixed in place but is still free to turn and it would just very slowly retract and push you can see I'm doing quite a few turns and very little speed which is okay because uh, it'll be an automatic system and I've done two different things here where the first is um, this top push block it would just be pushed in the middle with the Acme rod and then it would actually have grooves in the side which would have a piece on the back which we're actually deciding are going to be just some bolts through this that will just ride in this slot here and help keep this in line and then down here we've actually put guide rods underneath to help keep this in place now this is just like I said the last model and we've actually gone through one final incarnation after this with our computer model, but this kind of gives you the basic idea of what we're going for in terms of Acme rod pushing, keeping this gear fixed. What the computer model looks like is more like this, where you can see we have the plates here and here that are fixing this in place. Turn this to the side so you can actually see what's going on. So as I said, what we have here is we've got a sprocket that is going to be welded onto a piece of rod here. 
and then we're going to bore out the rod to allow space for this Acme rod to come through. And then there's this Acme nut here, and we're actually probably going to put one on both sides to divide the force up. And we're going to weld those to this rod as well. We're going to bore out the inside on a lathe. Um, and then we're going to put bearings onto it. You can see one bearing is in place, would be in place here, which is actually when it's pushing, the force is going to be on this bearing. So this is the bearing that needs to hold the most force, uh, close to about 5,000 pounds. Because even while we're only generating a little bit of torque here, the force is actually pushing all the way along this whole system. And so it'll be trying to push this whole bearing out of this block. And then, like I said, the sprocket and another thrust bearing on this side. And you can see how it would just be captured between these two plates so that it doesn't move forward and backward, but it is still free to turn. And that's the same thing that we're going to be doing on all of them. And actually on the computer model you can see that we've actually made the, desi the design decision to go with slots all the way around. So there will be two bolts from the bottom here, two bolts on the bottom of this thing, or maybe just one here, we're not sure yet. And then we're going to mount the motors to the bottom and the outside, and then just have a spot for the chain to run through. These sprockets might be too big for the actual plates that we're going to be putting on there. They might spread out on the outside, in which case we'll have to make wider slots on the bottom here for those to spin freely. But that's pretty much it as far as the, the method we're going to use to build it. We're just going to use some Acme rod and uh, much smaller motors, which is good. That's pretty much it. We're going to be going to build off of this and work on a hopper that will fit this as well.